And I, I think it's been a, a tale of two parts, really. The recent lockdown has been different from the one that we had, we had that began in, in March. So my reason for wanting to share my story is to give um, some information about what it's like as a parent going through the pandemic with a child that has um, special educational needs and the impact that the pandemic had on what support that individual received and then how that impacted upon us as a as a wider family. So the reason I say it's a tale of, of two parts is that this time round we haven't lost the support in terms of educational placement whereas first time round everything stopped and that was a pretty difficult situation to, to navigate. And all these talk about do not DNR orders and do not resuscitate those orders it isn't exactly giving me much hope either. And that's not just people with learning disabilities, that also goes for older people. Yeah. yeah. That was shocking, really shocking. I mean, I was really upset by that. Um, yeah, who isn't? So how did you find out about all of those um, do not resuscitate orders? And um, I, saw, I saw the, the, um, what's the, the, um older people's one on the news but actually about the learning disabilities one i actually i actually eventually it took took a bit of a while but i actually saw and and somebody retweeted a tweet from the um ceo of voyager care right the ceo that actually tweeted out how disgusted he was that uh, people in his in the care of his uh organization were actually being given blanket do not resuscitate orders and he was tweeting out his disgust with that <laughs> it particularly worries me about uh, people with learning disabilities who might have all all manner of means of health conditions as well well to be honest i mean if any of them, and I'll, there's a few members of my family and of Paul's family hey, that fall probably fall into that category easily. Right, um, if they're unlucky enough to catch the coronavirus and, and they need to go into hospital because they and they could potentially serious enough that they could die from it. Mm. Um, um, what? Um, <laughs> Are they in danger of getting a DNR on them um, and basically being being left to die? I think as well, actually, as an autistic person, and I've had this kind of feedback from different spaces in the autistic community, is that as autistic people, you know, going back to the social model of disability, there are so many things in, that society and culture expects of us in terms of social contact and going into very very busy intense spaces in terms of social interaction and sensory input dealing with multiple different demands actually this lockdown has given us the opportunity to have all of those things taken away and to experience the world in a way that has shown us that mm, good mental health a positive sense of well-being is perfectly possible as autistic people under the right circumstances yeah? yeah so actually the lockdown has been a really positive experience for lots of people